Hi, my name is Jason Gillum with Secure Ideas, and today what I want to talk about is uh, how to get a Android virtual device to talk to your proxy. So assuming you're using Burp Suite or Zap, um, this is part of a uh, mobile app pen testing um, setup, and hopefully this will help give you some easy steps for, for walking through this process. So to get started, the very first thing we need to do is we need to get the um, Android SDK installed. So the easiest way to do that is to go to developer.android.com and you'll be able to find the Android Studio download from there. Uh, so um, you can see once you, once you get in there, um, there are multiple different options here. You can install it on Windows, Mac, uh, Linux, and there's even a Chrome OS install. Um, so I'm going to be doing it on a Mac. Okay, so you have Android Studio installed. Go ahead and start it up. And once that's up and running, um, and you can, you can just pick a, a dummy project for this. We, we don't, uh, we're not doing any development here. Um, once, you, once you get inside, uh, go to the Tools menu, and you can see the AVD Manager there. Go ahead and select that. And that should open up a window showing your virtual devices. Uh, if you've just installed Android Studio for the first time, you probably don't have any devices installed. Um, but uh, like me, I already have one here, a Nexus 6. I'm going to go ahead and create another virtual device for this demonstration. So I'll go in and it's going to be a phone. I'm going to pick um, a Pixel 3 XL. It's important that you do not pick any with the Play Store emblem on them. Uh, those are not going to work, uh, not for what we're doing. They, they're uh, um, harder to root and uh, get developer access to because they're set up as production uh, virtual devices. So um, I'm going with a Pixel 3a XL, as I said. And um, on the next screen, we need to pick the system image. Uh, I've noticed that for the API level 30, the, the uh, R release, um, that there are some problems with the process that I'm going through for that. Um, I have tried a, f a few others that have worked uh, well. Oreo seems to work extremely well, and it's still fairly recent. So I'm going to go ahead and use Oreo. Um, this API level 27 in this case. On the next screen, we can choose additional options here, um, such as how much memory you're allocating um, and the name of it and so on and so forth. So uh, I'm just gonna use the defaults in this case. And that should have created my virtual device. Okay. Um, now, what we'll wanna do is start that up, and that's easy enough. You just go over to the actions here, and there's a play button. Launch this AVD in the emulator. So the emulator is a, one of the programs that gets installed when you install the Android SDK, and um, the, uh, it's, it's also bundled with Android Studio as well. So you'll be able to, um, to use that from the command line um, if you're not inside of Android Studio. Okay, so this took a little while to set up, um, but once it's up and running, um, the next thing we'll want to do is get our proxy going. So first what I'm going to do is open up, um, in my case I'm using Burp Suite, uh, I'm going to go to my proxy tab and look at my options and just verify that I am listening on uh, port 8080. Uh, you can use a different port, um, just, you just need to know which one it is. Um, so it's interface 1270.0.1 on port 8080 in my case. All right, I'm gonna put this next to here. Um, so to get your Android virtual device to talk to that proxy port, what you do is you look for this menu, this vertical menu on this side of the AVD, and at the bottom there's three dots. It kind of gets you into the uh, extended controls. And near the bottom of that menu is a settings uh, menu item, go ahead and click that. Um, and then at the top here, you'll see um, three options, general, proxy, and advanced. We want the proxy. Um, now mine is already set up, um, but in your case, if you've just uh, started this for the first time, you'll need to go in and set this up so that it's not using Android Studio HTTP proxy settings, and instead, just go ahead and set a manual proxy configuration to match your um, host name, so it should be 127.0.0.1 in most cases, and the same port number that you're using inside of Burp or Zap. And to verify that the proxy is working, what we can do is we can go to our HTTP history tab and scroll all the way down to the bottom. Um, we can see that uh, 
the Android virtual device has already made a bunch of connectivity checks, so those seem to be working. Um, that's, that's enough, I think, to show that this, is, this traffic is coming from the device. So that's it for HTTP, but what about HTTPS? So let's go ahead and open up Chrome inside of our AVD and go to an HTTPS website. I'll just go to HTTPS Google. Uh, if I could spell it, there we go, okay. Um, and we can see that we get in the, you know, the, uh, the warning. Hey, you've tried to go to HTTPS, something's broken with, uh, with uh, TLS, um, your certificate. So this is what we normally expect to see when we're having trouble setting up a proxy. Um, and the trouble is that uh, the device, in this case here, does not trust the certificates that are being generated by my interception proxy. So to make it trust those, what we need to do is export the certificate and get that certificate onto the a Android virtual device. Uh, how do we do that? Inside of Burp, you would go to Proxy Options and you see this Import Export CA Certificates. Uh, you want to export that certificate in DER format. Okay, so the very first uh, option on there. Um, and then remember where you put it. The extension is important. You'll want the extension to be .CRT. Okay, um, any other extension, there are some others that may work, uh, but .CRT, as far as I know, is the only extension that works across um, all versions of Android and is recognized as a certificate file. Uh, I'm gonna exit this. Um, once you have that exported, I have mine on my desktop here, um, to get it into the Android virtual device, it's very simple. All you do is drag that um, certificate file onto the device any file you do, you do that with, if it's not a .apk, it's going to put that file into the user's downloads folder. Um, so that's a convenient location. Okay, so the next step is we need to install that certificate. Um, so what I'm gonna do is go to the settings app. Here we are. So I have settings. Uh, and I need to find out how to install a CA certificate uh, for this build of Android. The menu system tends to vary from one build to the next, so, um, so the easiest thing to do is, is to just um, look for certificate, certificate, right? Um, and then we can see all the various different options for it. Um, it this isn't a Wi-Fi preference item, okay? Um, so that's important. What we're looking for is how to install a CA certificate. So uh, down in the bottom here, there's trusted credentials, display uh, trusted CA certificates, um, and there's also an install from SD card. Um, that's actually the one we're looking for in this case, install from SD card. All right, so under encryption and credentials, install from SD card, um, and it's a virtual SD card. I don't have any items listed on here under recent, um, so what I'm gonna need to do is, is go to my downloads, and there we can see it right there. Now. Here's where I'm gonna run into a little bit of a problem. With this particular build, I'll go ahead and create a name here. With this particular build of Android, um, I actually have to have a lock screen pin set up before I'm allowed to install a CA certificate. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, uh, I'm gonna go without a fingerprint. I'm just following the prompts on here and we'll set a very simple pin uh, I don't really need the secure start up. It just needs it for installing. So I'm just going with one, two, three, four. Uh, very secure pin, obviously. Um, and uh, I don't really care whether or not it's showing notifications about it. Okay. Um, now it's, it's said burp is installed on there. Um, I can verify that by going to the trusted credentials section on here and looking under user, and I'll see this one from Portswigger. Portswigger is the company that makes Burp Suite, so that is the certificate that I just installed now. To verify this, that this is working, what I can do is go back to Chrome and basically refresh that uh, HTTPS Google page, and we can see that now we didn't get the warning. Uh, I can also look inside my proxy history. If I scroll down to the bottom here, I should see some HTTPS requests that are making their way through, um, including the one for www.google.com that I just went to. All right, now, there is a problem. <laughs> Unfortunately, 
uh, this only really works for the, the browser. It's not going to work for HTTPS of applications. And to show this, I've created um, just a dummy example application uh, that I'm going to drag over to my AVD right now. Okay, um, And this is just using the default login template um, for, for an Android app. And what I've done on there is, um, what, I've, what I've done on there is I have it making a HTTP request to professionallyevil.com. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my app. I'm going to type in an email address and a password. It doesn't really care. It doesn't do any verification of these things. Um, and then it's just making an HTTP request out. Um, and if I look inside of my burp log, I don't see any requests going out to professionallyevil.com. So this is the problem that we need to solve. How are we going to get this to work? So the problem is that the certificate is in the user space. We need to move it to the system space. So to do this, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to exit out of the AVD. OK, so once your AVD is finished shutting down, what you're want to, going to want to do is go to the command line for the remainder. Um, so there's a couple of tools that we'll need to run. Uh, it's a good idea to have your platform-tools from your Android SDK, your platform-tools folder in your path. That just makes getting to some things easier. Um, there's two commands that we're really going to need um, from here. Uh, one is The first one is the emulator. So the emulator, like I said, is how you can run the, um, that, the AVD from the command line. Um, but what we want to do is we want to run it with some special flags. The setting of those flags is not available from inside of Android Studio, so um, we're going to do it from here. All right, so how do we find our AVD? First, you can do dash list dash AVDs. And we can see I have my two AVDs listed, my Nexus 6 and my Pixel 3a. Um, I'm going to I'm going to actually copy my Pixel 3a, and then I can do emulator dash avd um, and paste that. Um, and now the, the it's actually just one flag. Um, what we want is writable, writable, um, and it's spelt without an e uh, in the middle. So writable um, dash system. All right, so this is for making a writable file system. Um, and we can hit enter on this, and it's going to start up the same system image, but this time with a completely writable uh, file system. There's a couple more things that we'll need to do. Um, I should have run that with an ampersand. Uh, okay, so once we get back into our AVD, um, now we, we want to move that certificate. So to do this, what we want to use is a program called ADB. Um, ADB is an Android debugging bridge that allows you to run commands and interact with that AVD from the, uh, the command line on your host operating system. So if I type ADB root, um, that should tell me that it's restarting uh, the A ADB daemon as root. Um, and then I can type ADB uh, remount, okay, um, and that uh, remounts the, the um, file system as root. Um, and then I can type adb shell. Okay, so those are your three commands, adb root, adb remount, adb shell. Um, and now I'm actually running, I'm actually running in a shell inside of that Android virtual device, which is very cool. Uh, it is a Linux-based operating system as well. So um, from here, what I can do is I can run standard, uh, many standard Linux commands, especially for um, you know, navigating around. Um, I can you know, list the file system. If you take a look at that file system, it looks similar to a Linux file system. Um, and what I want to do from here is I want to copy our certificate from the user's space, I'll call it the user space, into the system space. Um, and to do that, um, we're going to just use a copy command. Now here's the tricky part. You need to know where the file is and where it's going. Uh, fortunately, I've looked that up already. Uh, so it's under data, uh, misc, user. It's going to be user zero since that's our only user right now. And CA certs added and um, then our certificate. 
Um, that certificate name, uh, I believe that depends on the um, um, where the certificate came from. So if you're using Burp Suite, you, yours may be the same. Um, it should be the only certificate you, that you've added. So uh, it should be easy to find once you go to, down to that uh, root folder. Um, now, uh, where's it going? It's going to system slash Etsy slash security and then CA certs. Okay. Um, so that's where we're putting it and I should be able to hit enter and it should work. Now, if you're using R, um, the uh, system image R, uh, I have found that uh, for some reason the file system is still uh, read only. <laughs> so um, I haven't worked out exactly why that is for R yet, but, um, but if you follow this process with, with, uh, with R, that's API 30, um, it probably won't work. Um, and without some kind of adjustment on there. Okay, so uh, now we have that installed. We can test this out very quickly. Um, all we need to do is I'm going to uh, go back to burp here, scroll down, open up my example application one more time, put in a user with a password and hit sign in and if everything worked as I hoped, I should now see my HTTPS request to professionallyevil.com. And there it is. Okay. And there we have it. That's how we get our AVD to talk to our proxy so that we can do our penetration test of Android applications without requiring a physical device. Thank you very much for watching.